Hello, my name is Magnus. I like writing T-SQL code and I really like when I can solve a complex problem with a set-based approach and make it run fast. So that's what I'm going to show you today. I was answering a question in the online forum about SQL Server and the question was how can I generate four letter words or codes with all different combinations of the letters A to Z. And it's it's fairly large number of combinations that you can do if you have four letters. Let's say there are 26 letters in the US ASCII or in the US alphabet, in the Amer American or English alphabet. So let's use those. Uh, for every position you have 26 possibilities. So the number of combination is 26 to the power of 4, which as we will see is a fairly large number. I saw some answers which used a loop based approach. So basically loop through the different positions, you would have uh, four loops, uh, one innermost and then another level and then another level and then one outermost loop. This is not a fantastic way to solve problems with the T-SQL language. It works probably fairly well if you write the code in C-sharp or, or some procedural language. In T-SQL, you want to use a set-based approach because that's what T-SQL and SQL Server is good at. So I'm going to use a tally table and I'm going to use a virtual one. I'm, I don't even materialize it, but just a result set with numbers. And I'm going to use that to make SQL Server do the looping for me. So my code will be set based and then of course SQL Server will do some looping uh, in the execution plan. So let's switch over to the demo and have a look at the code. To begin, I am using uh, this piece of code to generate the alphabet. So let's start with the from clause. I have a values clause to produce 26 rows, all with the number one. I'm not going to use them for anything. I just need the rows. I could have a null value, but now I'm using the value one. Uh, just so we have rows. Then I'm using the row number function. And the row number function, it's a windowed function. Uh, and I think it came already in SQL Server 2008. So it's one of the oldest window functions. It does exactly what you would think. It takes a result set and numbers the rows. To do that, you need to have an over clause with an order by in it. But I don't care about the order. I just want 26 rows numbered 1 to 26. So the way I do it is I order by select null. You can't do order by null. But if you do order by select null within parenthesis, that becomes a constant. Uh, that you can use in the order by clause within the over clause in the windowed function. So it's a trick. I didn't come up with it. I learned this from, I think it's a Benga. Then when you have done this with the row number, I'm going to subtract one. So I will have number zero to 25. Then I use the ASCII function to get the ASCII code for the letter A. And I add the result from the row number function. So for the first row, I add a zero, and then I add a one, which will be the ASCII code for the letter B and so on. And then finally, I convert that to a character using the char function. So let's run this and let's have a look at the result set. We have the alphabet produced. That's the beginning or the foundation. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it within a common table expression. So with alphabet as. 
So now I have a common table expression. And the nice thing about the common table expression is that in my outermost query, I can reuse this common table expression, refer to it by name. So now I have the alphabet. And the way I want to solve this problem is to uh, basically do this. This one is named N in the result set. So what I want to do is I'm going to select and what am I going to select? I'm going to select something. Let's do a start to begin with. From my common table expression alphabet. And I'm going to give the common table expression an alias name as position one. Then I'm going to cross join to alphabet again. And this is to get the different positions in the code or in the four letter string. So alphabet as position two, cross join, alphabet as position three. We can actually have a look at the resulting, uh, the result set from this query. I'm going to be consistent with how I do my aliasing as well. So let's look at this first. So it'll give me a, 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 B, A, A, C, A, etc., etc. So let's add the fourth position, cross join alphabet as P4. Uh, so now if I'd run this, it'll take a little while not to actually run the query, but to produce the result set and materialize it in Visual or in Management Studio. So now we have 456,976 rows. So the, it's a fairly large result set. But the question wasn't about producing four columns, but actually producing one column with a code. And that's pretty easy. Now that we have the different combinations, we can just use concatenation in our select list instead. So p1.n plus p2.n plus p3.n plus p4.n. So there we have it. And then I can do my ordering if I want it in a specific order. Order by, uh, I'm going to give this an alias as code. And then I order by code. And remember, in the order by clause, you can use an alias, which you can't use in the group by clause. And this has to do with the, the order of execution of a T-SQL query. That's not for today to discuss in depth. But you can use an alias in the order by clause. So let's run it. We now see that it actually works. It produces the correct number of results uh, and uh, or the correct number of rows and they are all unique. So these are the different combinations of the letters A to Z in four positions. Now let's look, I told you it was fast. And if I look here, this execution actually took four seconds. And that's not what I call super fast at least. But let's do a select in two because you have one part of the query execution, which is to actually run the query. The second part is when SQL Server just waits for Management Studio to receive the results and materialize them in this grid. Let's skip that part. So I'm going to do a little trick with just select uh, the code into a temp table. And let's start with the drop table if exists so that we can rerun it again. Let's run it. And wow, it's fast, right? Less than a second. Uh, let's do set statistics time on to see actually how much time it takes to for the CPU or how much CPU time we will use and what the elapsed time will be. And then let's just remember to set statistics time off by the end. So let's run it. And we see 106 milliseconds, 105 milliseconds elapsed time. These are actually the same because it's a single threaded query. Uh, 
and that's to produce half a, almost half a million rows with all possible combinations of the letters a to z in a string um, we can uh, add another uh, power of let's add so we do it in five letter strings instead cross join alphabet as position five and then we just need to remember to put it into the uh, the resulting string as well we can run it it's not as fast but it's pretty fast eight seconds cpu time two and a half seconds elapsed time and this time sql server decided to run some of the operators in the execution plan in parallel so i'm going to run it with the execution plan turned on so we can have a look at that and you'll see a lot of red warnings in uh, the execution plan because you will have a join without a predicate, which is the very meaning of a cross join. So don't don't bother about it. But we see here on these yellow little arrows, I'm going to zoom in so you actually see them. You see this? This means the, the plan is running in parallel. So the insert to the temp table is running in parallel. And that part of the query is actually 31% of the cost. So, I mean, of course, we need to materialize the result set somehow, but what we're actually interested in is the part of the query to the right, where we do the, the actual producing, production of the result set. And what does it do then? Well, it scans some constants. These are my, my ones. And then, as you can see, you have a lot of uh, constant scan segments and sequence project goes into the nested loop. And that is repeated down here and down here and down here. Uh, the sequence project stuff, that's for uh, the, uh, the segment and sequence project. That's what you will typically see uh, in a query plan where you use a ranking window function. So that's what these are for. And these are running in parallel because the cost for the query is so high that SQL Server considered running uh, the query in parallel. If we just hover over the uh, the select into uh, the leftmost operator in the plan, which is the actual select, we'll see the estimated subtree cost is 25.9745. Uh, and with the default value, for SQL Server, the cost threshold for parallelism is five. So that means this query will run in parallel, as we can see it does. Thank you for watching. Uh, this was a very short video about how you can use a tally table to solve a somewhat complex problem and to make it run fast. Thank you for watching. By the way, if you want to see more of my videos, then uh, subscribe to youtube.com slash C slash Transmocopter. I think you can hit the subscribe button uh, below the video. Uh, there you will also see all the presentations that have been done on SQL Friday, which is a weekly event running every Friday. SQLFriday.net, you will find the schedule. Sign up and uh, join me on Fridays. See you.